Hello and welcome once more to a Synced Stories video and I'm Chris and we're going to talk about uh, today um, the issue about what's wrong with this color flats. Um, so, the, so the question we're going to try to answer is um, there is some aspect of this uh, flattening, this auto flattening, um, that is uh, not so good. So we're going to try to describe um, how that is, and we're going to try to find a solution of what to do um, the next time, because there is there's a uh, sort of an algorithm or there's a there's a reason we could have sort of done the done the work before we arrived at this uh, stage here we could have done that work differently in order to get a better auto flats so flattening the colors um, is a very important step in the production of a, a full color comic book so it's it's really important that we uh, get that process under our belts as soon as possible so so we can be very efficient because comic book making is is there are so many steps and so many things we have to take care of before we have a finished product so we really have to sort of uh, get the process uh, minimized and uh, quality wise also maximized um, at the same time so that's what this video is going to be all about but before uh, we are going to do that I'm just going to quickly open up this cover page here as I usually do this is the uh, product that I'm working on right now. It's 987 degrees centigrade and it's a science fiction action thriller adventure uh, 40 pages full color and um, It's here. We see Barry Riley in a dangerous situation and um, This book is filled with a lot of danger a lot of action a lot of adventure a lot of drama a lot of romance a lot of this and that and i think you will really enjoy it so this is what i'm working on now and uh coming up we should say then right so let's so in uh so this color flats i should say this also uh when we're now going to talk about this this is a color flats from uh, 987 degrees centigrade the UD 11 book um, from the uh, unlimited danger series season one so so this is an actual uh, production uh, sort of oriented it's not not just for fun or I mean it's a lot of fun doing it but um, so, so it's actually something worthwhile to take a look at. All right, so let's let's ponder this. So we have this. Um, we have we're in Photoshop right now, and we have this is page thirteen, panel A three. That is the third panel on the first row, the A row. So okay, and. What I'm doing in my um, X flats, uh, my my color flats, I call them X flats because I'm doing this auto flattening, not in Photoshop but but in an external program, right? So X is for external, so I'm producing my my flats externally and then I'm just uh, saving them as a PSD, as you can see here. PSD here. So then I just double click them and I'm back into Photoshop. So I'm so I'm working mostly in Photoshop 
99% in Photoshop and then I go out of Photoshop and produce my X flats and then I'm back again in Photoshop. So, um, so what, what I'm doing here normally with, with my X flats is that I'm producing them like as squares. Why do I do that? Well, because my frames are always my panel frames, my panel, uh, what's it called? Um, borders, my panel borders are always smaller. So my panel borders go something like, like this inside here somewhere. So I'm always doing the color flats a little bit bigger and the square size fits me perfectly because I'm I'm my my uh, panels are mostly like portrait so they they almost never the landscape because I I have a lot of panels per page I'm not one of those modern science fiction or I am a science fiction kind of writer but but I'm not one of those modern comic book producers who who only have like five panels a page or something because I think that's a, a, a that's a bad decision uh, for many reasons which I will talk about in another video but I'm having um, in general in this comic book I have some uh, average I think the average panels on a page is something like 14 panels a page or something 14 to 15 or something like that so um, so so that means that most of the the overwhelming uh, majority of, of the panels uh, in my uh, comic book is portrait so so by using squares I can always um, be sure I'll almost be sure and if there is some other if I do have a landscape uh, panel somewhere then I just make a, a quick fix for for that and make make the color flats bigger at the at the um, in the horizontal dimension so so that's no big problem but it's very good to have like a like a frame or a frame size that is dedicated for for the color flats so that um, um, you and then the, and then by doing this there is also uh, like this you you have a little bit of margin if you want to expand your uh, panel uh, and make it a little wider if, if for some reason you have to redistribute the panels on one row um, because I'm, I'm using sort of like the Tintin asterisk kind of um, layout with four rows per page and um, each each uh, row has maybe three or four uh, panels so so anyway so we're, we're having this uh, so this is the, co the color flats and um, wh what's wrong with this well w one thing that that maybe looks peculiar in the in the first uh, when you first look at it is that the colors are strange I mean is, is it like the some kind of nostalgia from the 1970s or something or, or <laughs> this is some Andy Warhol uh, f uh, construction or, or layout or, or design mm, no it isn't it's a color flats so it's a color flats which is produced automatically by a program taking no um, concern or, or not being concerned but what, what, what the final colors are going to look like 
but the the only thing it, it does that program is to produce areas of color that quickly can be um, changed to another color so I can quickly use m the magic wand by pressing W on the keyboard and clicking on the red area here or the magenta or whatever you want to call it and I quickly can go to let's say I just want to take up the U window here and then I can just do some colorize here and I can shift the U here and the left uh, and change the saturation if I want to make it more um, stronger color and I can modify this very very easily later on when I'm actually going to select the real colors so in terms of in terms of the actual color in each each of these areas I'm clicking on here um, there's nothing wrong with this color as being a X flat. So what I what I'm usually doing here with this color flats layer, I'm 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 uh, copying it to the my real document and pasting it twice and I am naming one of them just X flats and I'm locking that layer and then I'm using the other layer which I am not locking keeping it unlocked and to where I'm modifying the colors so I can do that in a different video show you exactly what I'm doing there but this video is more about uh, finding the the, the fault or finding the error or finding the problem of this uh, color flats result that I'm looking at here this original um, production uh, or produced auto flattened uh, image so the actual colors um, are perfectly all right because all of them are different that's that's what we want we want um, difference and now you can see here also that even if those are diff different somehow or other this you see that the green is darker up here on the top of the this rectangle but it's it's most of the area here is lighter uh, green so why is that how what I isn't that a, a problem in the X flats I mean if if they actually were perfectly produced X flats shouldn't this be selectable this darker green area on the top here well the problem is that uh, I have set my tolerance of the magic wand tool too high so if you look up here this this is the magic wand tool uh, for the moment there is the ma ma magic wand and the tolerance here you can see it's it's 32 and if I have it too high it's it's too um, generous it sort of includes too much um, sometimes you may want to do that sometimes you you may want to include uh, shades that are very close in, in color but when we are doing color work um, and trying to produce the real colors that we the the final colors we want to be able to select all the different um, 
colors in the X flat layer and and um, so that we can change them even if we perhaps end up with the same color later on but but we want uh, we, we want them accessible and to do that we always have to make sure we have the tolerance very low up here so I put it at one and now I deselect everything by control D just to reset and let's try it again now let's try to yeah right so when I click on the lighter green area here I only select the lighter green and now when I select up here I only select the slightly darker green area up here so so it, the, the error or the problem wasn't in the X flats in the generated X flats image the problem was in the tools setting of the magic wand so that seems to be okay also so then what what, what in the world what, is it okay I mean is it was it just a trick that you said that you know what's the problem with the with this X flats no there is a problem with this X flats but it's not extremely serious however it's a time-consuming uh, thing so by being alert here we we can save time in the future so let's now I'm zooming in here the problem lies the problem of this X flats this uh, color flats image is that we have too many too many colors here there are too many areas or, or I sh should perhaps say it's we have too many areas because the more areas we have the more colors the the auto generator has to produce so we so my own rule here which you may like or not is that i am minimizing the number of areas um, so that my my auto flatter program can um, generate a very uh, quick uh, result it's it's not that it's not that it, it it's go is going quicker for the program to generate the the result it's just that it's it's less areas for me to click on and to change and to in the later when I'm selecting the colors so let's look at my let's look at this I should have done this before perhaps no well we can just look at this in Photoshop let's do it in Photoshop instead we'll see all right so here we have here is how I prepare this is the artwork before I send it to my auto flatting program and here you can see here that uh, my my goal here at this stage is to close all gaps between lines so so the idea here is that if I only if all lines are closed so let's see up here for instance if 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 there is no there's no uh, white space in between these lines anywhere so so every, all lines are whoops all lines are connected there are no gaps as you can see here all 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 lines are coming 
uh, coming together. So, so what we don't see is, let's see if I can quickly, let's take a brush here and make it. So what we don't see is this, right? So my job as a, as, as a, when I'm preparing for sending the line art to the, to the, to the um, auto flattener is to repair to make sure that all connect connections are like that because only then can uh, the auto flattener uh, produce results like this so so the idea here then is that this digital clock here, alarm clock, the mistake I did was that was that I had too many uh, white spaces here. So, so the, this digital kind of um, display here is is um, composed of small parts. And but that would have been okay if if I wanted them all the same color. Or, or so sorry if I if I wanted the end result to be that all of these uh, segments or parts if all of them were supposed to have different color then of course I could could sort of do exactly what I did that would be perfect because then then I would have to um, click on each and one of them and, and select the right color what I wanted but normally I, I uh, alarm clocks don't look like that right so they are either um, green shining shiny green or they're shiny red or they're shiny blue or uh, some some other color or maybe white even um, so I already knew at this stage when I prepared this X flats image, I already knew that I should have the same color of these digits, right? Whether that color w would end up as green or red, I, I didn't know that. So I, I, perhaps I thought it would be green, right? But 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 the idea is that I knew it would be one color, all of them. So 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 the right thing to do at this stage would have been to say that okay, here will be just one color. Whatever that color is, is just one uh, color. And I know that the 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 color must must lie beneath the line art. So therefore, okay, I'm just I'm just erasing everything here, right? So this 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 is my so I'm doing this sloppily now here, right? With just a brush here, but I'm just making the point here that that this could have been foreseen easily so i and now i don't have to sort of click on all the layer or all the different areas and make them the same color in the later stage everything's just prepared perfectly now right so that's that's a sort of uh, kind of um, mental work you have to do you have to sort of 
uh, or I, n not you, but 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 I. I'm talking to myself here. That that I am. I have to see the colors on the page even before they are there. I have to plan the colors so so I know. Um, uh, so I, I can sort of quickly do the coloring later. So then it, the coloring only takes me. Or the the basic coloring only takes me five minutes, I, in, in the first instance, just to get the preliminary colors, the preliminary base colors, uh, right. So that's the that's the sort of the lesson that we by by doing this we we. And also another thing, actually, when I look at this page here, another thing what I do is I I often take away other details that I know will have no um, impact on the creation of the, the colored areas. So here, for instance, you can see these vents or whatever they are. Um, these are on the original line art, but they have absolutely no bearing on the production of the coral flats here. So, as as a rule, then I normally just uh, erase them already before, so I can easier uh, see what. Um, what the color flats, uh, what I'm sort of, sort of um, looking at, and this is good also because it minimizes the number of lines that you have to check for um, uh, for intersections and, and gaps and, and like that. So if you if you know, and this is over here all as well. This is not this line here in my coloring scheme is is not. Is not needed. So, because this this pillow here is going to, it only has one color, in my coloring scheme for the base colors at least. Then of course you can apply effects and like that later on, but but the base colors I'm talking about there, or some some uh, colorists would would talk also about. Uh, local colors, but um, but anyway, so that's just uh, some quick tips here for um, when you're doing your auto flatting. If you're preparing for producing the the auto flats, and I will make some more videos on exactly how to do that with. Um, programs that are that are free. So um, so if you want to do to to see such a video, you can leave a comment below or um, well, and you can you can leave comments anyway if you want to with questions or remarks or or. Um, suggestions for future videos and stuff stuff like that so all right i think that's it for now and i'm hoping that you have a great day bye bye